Hello, in this tutorial, we will be covering the checkout and check-in process. In order to scan items out or in on a job, we'll first need to find those logistics plans. And we can do that one of two ways. The first way is going to be through our main menu dropdown, operations, and logistics. This is gonna bring us to our logistics manager page where we will be able to enter the date range for the logistics plans we want to see, a specific job number, we can hide packed logistics plans, filter for either jobs or POs, the name contains, which is the name column here, whether it be job description or PO name, as well as a tracking number. Now, once we have that information entered, you can go ahead and click refresh. That will give us a list of logistics plans in our grid. From there, we can also filter for incoming or outgoing uh, if you guys just wanna see those specific plans. Now, once they're listed in our grid, uh, we can either single click, and down here at the bottom, we will have that checkout option. It will show us the items on this checkout plan. Clicking on checkout will take us to the checkout page. Or we can just double click on that plan. It will open up a new tab and bring us to our checkout page. Now, another option is we can go into a specific job. So I'll go into one of my recent jobs here. And on the main job page, if we scroll down, on the right hand side, we will have checkout or check in. These are hyperlinks. If you click on this, it brings up a new pop up window to show you the logistics plans associated with this job. It'll show you the dates in which those items should be scanned out, the warehouse they should be scanned out from. And then you can click on that option, and that will take you to the checkout page as well. Now, on the checkout page, you'll notice on the right-hand side, we'll have a list of items. This is essentially our pull sheet, so all items that have been added to our job. Once we start scanning these items out, those items will populate on the left-hand side. So these will be all items that have been scanned out already. Now to scan out our serialized assets, we can do a few different things. First, just making sure that the cursor is in this barcode field. Use your scanner, start scanning barcodes. You can also manually type in barcodes and click enter, and that will add those items to our grid. And then the last option for the serialized assets, we'll be clicking on the magnifying glass here, getting a list of those assets to check out. Clicking on that green circle with a plus sign, you'll get that good scan sound. We'll continue to scan a few items here, and you'll see those items listed on the left-hand side. Now for our non-serialized items, same thing, you can use a magnifying glass, but we also have our non-serialized option up here at the top. Go ahead and select the items you would like to scan out, as well as entering your scan quantity for each item. And then you can go ahead and click on add items. You'll notice on the left-hand side, those items will be added. And as we start to scan these items out, you will see green check marks, letting you know that these items have been scanned out in full. So in this grid, you'll see what was actually booked, what was scanned or checked out, and the remaining balance. So as we meet that booked amount, those items will have that green check mark. Now, another option is if we have items that are either not on the job, or if we want to bring additional quantity of certain items, what you can do is you can add those items to our job, And you'll notice if we go over the booked amount, which you'll see for this item we have, we have a balance of negative one, that item will be highlighted in yellow, letting you know that it's overpacked. Now, just by scanning the item doesn't automatically affect availability, doesn't add this item to the job. So we will need to use what's called our compare report. The compare report here will allow you to add those items to the job, when you add those items, they're gonna be listed as pull sheet only items. So these items will not affect the price of the job or the subtotal of the job, but it will affect the availability. So you would select the items that you wanna add, click add to job, that will add this item to our checkout page. And again, add this item as a pull sheet only item in an overpack set on the job. So again, affecting availability, but not affecting the price. If you do not use a compare report, that item will just be listed as a scan and it will not affect the availability. So the compare report is very important if you guys are bringing additional items or additional quantity. 
Now, once we have these items scanned out, we do have a few different print options that you guys can utilize. First one is gonna be our print here, which is our packing list. If we click on that, you'll see it gives us basic information on this job, dates, job description, client, venue. And it will also show the items that have already been scanned out. Basic information, part number, um, product description, barcode serial number, things like that. So that will be our packing list, a little bit different than the pull sheet. The pull sheet will show you all items added to the job while the packing list, just items that were scanned out. Back on our checkout page, you also have the ability to add multiple barcodes at once. So if you enter those barcodes here in this window, you can click add all. But if you do have your scanner, you can set it up to where it automatically clicks enter. Um, so you guys don't necessarily need to use this option here. We also have our manifest report. So the manifest report is going to show you the information based off of the products that have already been scanned, weights, measurements, uh, country of origin, things like that. So if you are going across border state lines and you guys need that information, come to this page. You can filter for pounds or kg. Click search here. And again, that will show you the items scanned out, dimensions, weights, as well as totals down here at the bottom. Now, within our checkout page, if you are creating purchase orders for items on the job, you may see a yellow banner across the top of the page letting you know that there's subrental items. If you have subrental items, you can go ahead and click on the subrental box here. It shows you a list of those subrental items you can select into the barcode that you want to scan out. That can either be in an internal barcode that you guys utilize for subrental items or your vendor's barcode. That way you can track the items that you're sending out as well as the items that you're receiving to make sure that they match. On the checkout page, we also have the ability to print pull sheet. What that's gonna do is just print out the information on the right-hand side, as you see in this grid. We can also save pull sheet grid, which is the information again on the right-hand side, but saving it to an Excel file. And then the last thing here is just going to be our check availability. So this tool is nice if you guys are using the compare report, want to bring additional items, you can check the availability of that item to make sure that you have enough to check out um, and affect the availability. If you do, go ahead and scan those items out and again, use your compare report. So now that we've gone through our checkout page, we'll jump into the check-in page. And I'm going to go back to our logistics manager and then double click on our incoming plan for this job. On the check-in page, you're gonna be able to see items that have already been scanned in, as well as items that have not been scanned in. So similar to the checkout page, make sure that the cursor's in this barcode field here, start scanning those items or manually typing those barcode numbers in. We can also use the green circle with the plus sign here. Selecting that item, you'll hear that good scan sound, adds the item over here on the left-hand side. Now for our non-serialized items, we do have that non-serialized option up here at the top. That'll give you that pop-up window where you can select those items, enter the scan quantity, and then add the items to the left-hand side. You can also check in those non-serialized items from the grid using that green circle with the plus sign. We do have the packing list print option on the check-in page as well. Again, just like the checkout page, this will show you only items that have already been scanned back in. Add codes, again, entering multiple codes, similar to the checkout page, adding those codes, adding them all at once. And then on the check-in page, we also have a receive all option, which you guys can define which users have access to this button, but this will bring all items back in from the job without having to check in each one individually. Now, a few options that we've recently added to the check-in page, repack to another job and repack to a new job. So repack to another job, what this can be used for is if items have a quick turnaround, these items need to go back out on another truck for another show. You can first scan those items in, make sure that they are listed on the left-hand side, click on repack to another job, select your magnifying glass, 
so enter the job number, click search, and then select the plan in the grid and repack. So what that will do is scan the items in on this job as we see, but also scan the items out on the job that we just repacked them to. Now repacked to a new job, a little bit different. These are going to be for items that have not been scanned back in. So for instance, the client wants to keep these items another week, another month, and you guys want to bill for those days. You can first leave or scan the items that came back in, leave the items that did not come back in, and then repack those items not scanned back into a new job. What that will do is create a brand new job, allow you to enter the dates, uh, make any adjustments that you need to, um, and then you'll have that job with those items on that new job as well as scanned out on that job. Now, up here at the top, a few additional tabs, refresh grid, just gonna refresh your grid down below. Over here, you'll be able to save the return grid, we also have the ability to create a short. So if the item doesn't come back in, you want to charge your client for that, you can create essentially another job, mark that item as a sale item, so you can charge your client, have them pay for those missing items. Then we also have the ability to create a temporary kit. Kits are groups of items that go out together. Um, a nice tool if you have cases or racks, so that way when items come back in, you can make sure or define which items are in that case or in that rack, create that temporary kit. So the next time that they go out, you can just scan that header rather than having to scan each individual item because you've already gone through the process to make sure that those items are listed. So this is our scan in process for a specific job. Now, another tool that we have is the global check-in and that can be found in our main menu dropdown underneath operations and check-in. So within this global check-in page, you'll be able to define the warehouse you're scanning those items into, dates that you're scanning, and then click receive goods. This will bring us to a check-in page where again, making sure that your cursor's in the barcode field, start scanning away or manually entering those barcodes. And then you'll also have the non-serialized tool up here at the top for those non-serialized items. The only difference for non-serialized is it will show you the job number these items are associated with, so you can make sure that you're selecting the appropriate ones that came back in, and then add those items. So that will be global check-in, again, so that way you're not having to go into each individual job, or if you get one truck with multiple jobs on it, you don't have to separate those items, you can just start scanning them in right away. Once you scan those in, those will go to the appropriate logistics plans, and they will show up on the check-in plans for those specific jobs. Now, once we've kind of gone through that checkout and check-in process, there are a few reports that you can utilize to make sure that you're receiving those items back on the days that are listed. So after that action date five. And those reports can be found in our main menu dropdown, operations. And here you'll have the items not returned report as well as your items not returned non-serialized. So items not returned, this will be for all serialized assets, items that were scanned out on a job and did not return after action date five. From here, you can enter a job number, project number, dates for the job, as well as a specific warehouse, and then click search. So again, show you a list of items, the barcode information, product information, client, um, and these items are gonna be items that were scanned out on a job and not scanned back in after action date five. Same thing goes for underneath operations, items not returned, non-serialized. This is gonna be a very similar report. The only difference is it shows our non-serialized items. So again, product information, if those non-serialized have, <coughs> excuse me, if those non-serialized items have a barcode associated with them, those will display here. Client dates, and again, items that were scanned out and not scanned back in after action date five. So with that being said, that will conclude our tutorial on the checkout and check-in process. Thank you very much.